Remember, a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you another in their exciting new series of broadcasts on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Each week, Hallmark will bring you true-to-life stories of actual persons who, in their own way, have contributed to a better world for all of us to live in. Presented on the Hallmark Hall of Fame by our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame, respectfully dedicated to men and women whose service, sacrifice, and devotion have brought us all lasting benefit, but who are all too little known to us. We've all heard of Paul Revere, his great ride came at the beginning of the revolution, rousing the countryside to arms, but there was another great rider of the revolution, Captain Jack Jewett without whose personal courage and magnificent horsemanship, the revolt might have ended abruptly and in our defeat. Therefore, tonight, the Hallmark Hall of Fame proudly pays tribute to that headlong, colorful rider of the revolution, Captain Jack Jewett. In a moment, his true and blood-tingling story. And now, here's Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you're looking for a way to say something to someone you care for, look for a Hallmark card, and you'll find the card you want to send. Because Hallmark cards are designed to say what you want to say, just the way you want to say it, with the good taste you demand of anything that bears your signature. That's why Hallmark on the back of a greeting card has come to mean you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Battle Circus, starring Humphrey Bogart and June Ellison, with Keenan Wynn and Robert Keith. And now, here is Lionel Barrymore with the first act of your Hallmark Hall of Fame. The rider is a giant six feet four inches tall, 225 pounds of sinew, scarlet coat, pulled hat, riding cape, and audacity. Mark well the man, mark those thundering hoofbeats. We owe our identity as a nation to that living thunder and the man who rides it, Captain Jack Jewett of the Continental Army. dark time in the American Revolution. Defeat and demoralization dogged our armies. The struggle for independence was all but lost. In Hanover, Virginia, 250 picked British dragoons prepared for a flash raid to end the war under the fabulous British officer Colonel Talton. Against those drums of empire, history was preparing one opponent, the rider of a giant horse. Open! Open! Jack! Come in, come in. Uh, Ned Shipper's here yet? I've been here. Oh, hello, Ned. Sit down, Jack. Oh. Uh, well, what's the crisis, boys? As though you didn't know. Jack, we've had some hard defeats. Oh, granted. That makes winning the war a real sporting business. This is none of your larks, Jack. Virginia is wide open to Cornwallis. He can walk in and take what he pleases. 
Our armies are scattered. We need men. Now, find your dozens. Now, wait, Jack. We need thousands. I'm speaking of dozens like myself, which answers your need, too. Now, be serious, Jack. You'll have your men. How? For my part, I'll wrap down every door in the colony riding by night, recruiting soldiers. You can't do it alone, Jack. Oh, I'll have my horse. Never go riding without him. Jack, don't joke about this. Uh, by the way, where's Nelson Evelyn? Well, uh, he ain't here. Well, I can see that, can't I? He, uh, we didn't invite him. Why not? Because we think he's a Tory and a spy, that's why not. Oh, that's serious. He's been walking with your girl, Sally, you might care. <laughs> Correct that. <laughs> About the new troops we require. Ah, we'll look to that. Ah, you disturb me, Jack. You take it too light. I ride lightly for my size, but I arrive, Tom. I that I warrant. Your hands on your hearts, then. Repeat after me. We, Tom Redding, Ned Shivers, and Jack Jewett. We, we Tom, Tom Redding, Redding Ned, Ned Shivers, Shivers, and Jack, Jack Jewett. Jewett. Appealing to the Supreme Judge of the World for the rectitude of our intentions. Appealing to the Supreme Judge of the World for the rectitude of our intentions. To mutually pledge to this cause of liberty our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honors. To mutually pledge to this cause of liberty our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honors. It's a mighty impressive oath, Jack. Thank you, Thomas. I uh, sort of cribbed it from the Declaration of Independence, but thank you. Oh, no. Raiders again. Meeting tomorrow night, same time at the Cuckoo Tavern in Louisa. Let's get out of this fry. Here for a moment, Raven, for some small rebuke to an adult lady who walks with Tory. <sighs> Sally, it's me, an extraordinary horseman, and in every respect, a perfect splendor of a fellow. Mistress Robard, man and opportunity knocked together. What's the matter, Sally? Come in. You seem distressed, Sally. Is there something the matter? Put up your hand, huh? Captain Jewett. Nelson Evelyn, is it? Jack Jewett. Traitor. Tory and spy. And I've stronger words if the lady will leave. I couldn't help it, Jack. He saw you coming through the window. He threatened me with a gun. I had to do this it. This comes of walking with fops with lace at their cuffs. I didn't know he was against us, Jack, until now. Believe me. I can vouch for Sally on that, Jewett. I'd impeach your testimony if you swore on oath that grass is green, Tory. But it, it isn't too bad, Jack. He, he promised me you'd only be taken prisoner. <laughs> Are you laughing? <laughs> because he told you grass is pink and you believe him. I don't know. I mean, he means to hang me. Oh, no. No less. I'll challenge him. Ask him straight. Nelson, you didn't trick me, did you? You didn't lie. Never. I uh, withheld some of the truth. <laughs> You'll hang him. You'll kill him. I'm a loyal subject of His Majesty George. You lied to me. Those are harsh words from soft lips. You won't kill him. I won't let Sally, you. Sally, fix it. You. Drop the you. gun, Nelson. <laughs> Drop it. You. <laughs> Now, sit down, traitor. You'll still Sit hang. down. Now you can peer down my gun for a bit. Liar. You may shoot me. Lace at my cuffs or not, I don't fear your bullet. I've done my work. General Cornwallis knows that Governor Jefferson and the legislature have left Richmond in a meeting in Charlottesville. Colonel Tarleton left Hanover this morning to capture them all at Monticello. You don't think that'll stop the fight? Your army of farmers and clerks is ready to quit now. What will they think when Thomas Jefferson, author of their Declaration of Independence, author of their scurrilous liberty is in our hands, hmm? Get me some rope, Sally. Yes, yes. Some colonial gentlemen, clerks and farmers, I believe, are waiting for me at the Cuckoo Tavern not far off. I'll leave you with them, Nelson. Oh, I sense an heroic gesture in the making, Captain. Am I right? You imagine yourself a quite dashing fellow in that 
absurd red coat and the plumed hats you affect. A uh, horseman extraordinary, as you bawled outside a moment ago. Well? Do you imagine you can outride Tarleton's dragoons? Ha! A Sunday canter. You're a fool, Jewett. Tarleton and his dragoons ride like the wind, and they passed here hours ago. I don't believe it. This is all the rope we have, Jack. Ask Mistress Robard if Tarleton's men did not pass here. Sally? Hours ago. You see, you're being foolish, Captain. Tarleton's men ride like the wind, and I'm a fool. Very well, Tory. Perhaps I ride like one. Shall we see? <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the second act of our true story of Captain Jack Jewett. Last week, I visited a friend who has earned a reputation for thoughtfulness. He's a dynamic person with a flair for getting things done, and yet he always finds time to remember those who helped him reach his goal. For instance, when I walked into his office, I found him addressing a birthday card. You know, Frank, he said, each year, I remember my high school English teacher in Terre Haute. She was the one person in my youth who encouraged me to go on to college. Well, it occurred to me that the school teacher must take particular delight in getting his greeting each year because a birthday card is such a special card to receive. It seems to say, I know that today is your own day. I want to wish you happiness. Now, if you have a dear one with a birthday coming up, I'd like to make a suggestion. Go to a store where Hallmark cards are sold and select from the big varied collection of Hallmark birthday cards. You'll find styles to suit every personality and words that say what you want to say just the way you want to say it. And remember, when your card is received, the hallmark on the back will tell your friend you care enough to send the very best. And now, here is Lionel Barrymore. Forty dark miles to Monticello, home of Thomas Jefferson. If the very author of American Liberty were captured, the heart of the rebellion and the spirit of the people would be broken. The revolution would be over. Riding down the smooth highway, riding like demons, 250 of Tarleton's raiders. Riding the wilderness, the dim forest trails, and traces of Indian and backwoodsmen, Jack Jewett, last of the swashbucklers, riding like a fool, in steady, deadly peril of pitfalls and overhanging limbs, riding for a fall. Try to move, mister. Huh? I said don't move. It's all right. No, no bones broken. I can manage. Ain't exactly the point, mister. I'll do. The point I'm getting at is don't move or I'll shoot. What? That's what. Oh. Who are you? Point is, who are you? Are you a Tory or a patriot? I'm asking you. And you're down on the ground, and I'm on my feet with a musket on you, and that's the difference who asks. All right. My name is Jewett. I'm riding against Talton's raiders. You got a bet on with them? Mr. They're riding to capture Thomas Jefferson above Charlottesville. If they take him, the revolution will be over. So you say. So I say, and so it is, and we're wasting precious time. You claim you're a patriot. Yes, and let me up on my way. Not so fast. Why are you wearing a red coat like the red coat? I happen to dress that way. Hmm. It's my private uniform. You a private? I'm a captain. Captain Jack Jewett. Maybe. My father runs the Swan Tavern in Charlottesville. 
Please, I've got to be on my way. Maybe you're a tar taking a shortcut to Monticello. Monticello. He even talk like It's one. Italian. Listen, I tell you... Better I... come along with me, man. I said, listen. We hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal. That they are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights... That's enough. Would a loyalist know those phrases by heart, would he? Can't say. What is it? Oh, it's the Declaration of Independence. Sounds nice. Can you walk? <sighs> Give me a hand up. Now, see. You're a sight. These all dried with blood. Dried, did you say? You're a sight. I've been lying here too long. Please listen to me. On your way, stranger. On your way. Thanks. Stranger. <laughs> Good boy. Good old Raven. God be with you, stranger. Hiya! Hiya, Raven! Ride, Jack Jewett. The fate of a nation's riding tonight. Scarlet apparition on a monstrous horse. Ride. Monticello, 15 miles away. Where's Tarleton? Where are the raiders? How close are Britain's picked dragoons to Jefferson? Oh, who goes there? A British patrol. Oh, hold that thing! Hold the patrol! Stop! Fire! Ride, Captain Jack Jewett. The ghosts of mighty horsemen ride with you, past and future. Revere the silversmiths with you. Sheridan of the North will ride from Winchester in your great tradition. The peerless cavalry of Jeb Stewart of the South will ride like this. Ride. Monticello, eight miles away. Where is Tarleton and his raiders? They ride on velvet, Captain. You ride on flint. Rest, Captain. Water and rest. Who's that? Who are you, I ask? Hmm? What's your politics? What? Patriot or Tory. Why? Answer me. No throat for talk or patience for quibble. Answer me. Patriot, you can put your pistol away. I want water. No streams on your I way? I couldn't stop then. I've got to stop now. I can't go much further. I want water. Your, your face is cut to shreds. Give me a drink. Of course. And you better let me fix your face up, too. Branches slash. Slash like whips. I'll do my best for you, stranger. Now, first, drink this down. Yes. Now, easy, easy, mister. That ain't good. <laughs> Another. Uh, better first let me get at these cuts. They're right bad, mister. Another drink, I say. No, sir. I'll wash your face and tie up the worst cuts first. Like whips. Like clubs. Now, then. This'll sting, most likely. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so. And so. Uh, you note I ask no questions, mister. Listen. They break near. Oh, now, wait, mister. I can't wait. Totten will ride faster with the sun. I can't wait. Well, you're thirsty and you're hurt, mister. I've got to ride. There's a little river below Charlottesville, near Thomas Jefferson's beloved Monticello, the Rivanna River. Over the Rivanna was a bridge. Across the bridge was a winding road up Jefferson's little mountain. To Monticello, out of the wilderness, plunged.
one's the terror of a horseman. Tattered and slashed and wild-eyed, almost colliding with another horseman in the scarlet of Tarleton's cavalry, in advance of the main body. Jefferson. Sir, the sooner you leave here, the better. Ah, you're tired. Drink your tea, Captain. I don't know how much ahead of the main troop that advance rider was galloping, sir. You've outridden Tarleton more thoroughly, Captain, than you realized. Thanks to you, we'll receive ample warning now when he appears at Rivanna. You rest. You're very kind, sir. Kind? Dressing my cuts and wounds. Entertain me. Yeah. You horrified my servant when you first appeared. <laughs> yeah, the wilderness makes a rough bridal path. Captain Jewett, I hope I'm a modest man, but I should be blind to present history if I did not realize that my capture might have been the final blow to our cause. I hope history and a grateful posterity will record that you outrode the finest cavalry in the war to save the American Revolution. Mr. Jefferson! Mr. Jefferson. Yes, what is it? Soldier outside. There's been fighting at the Rivanna Crossing, sir. Colonel Tarleton's coming up the mountain. Thank you. Will you prepare the horses and notify the household we are leaving? Yes, Mr. Jefferson. Well, it seems that tea is over, Captain Jewett. Um, will you join me in my headlong retreat before the enemy? <laughs> I'd be delighted, sir, but... Uh, well, I have some unfinished business with a fair, but fairly fickle lady back home. Better hurry now, sir. There's still a war on, sir. Never mind the bridge, Raven. Jump, Raven! Yeah. Captain Jack Jewett's epic ride, Jefferson escaped, and with time to spare. The revolution continued to final victory and lasting independence. After the war, Captain Jack Jewett served several terms in the Virginia legislature he had once saved from capture. Later, he became one of the men responsible for Kentucky statehood. His son became a painter of note. His grandson, a commodore. Yep, Jack Jewett. Rider of the Revolution rode beyond the Revolution into a firm place in American history. But through all his life, he carried the scars of that desperate ride. And now I'm sure you want to hear about next week's show. But first, here's Frank Goss to tell you about a hallmark blessed event. When a new baby blesses the family of a friend or relative, all of us love to share in the welcoming ceremony. And one of the nicest, most original ways of doing it is by sending the mother a brand new Hallmark Cradle card. 
You see, the Hallmark Cradle Card is a big pink and blue greeting that's made to hold all the other baby cards your friend will receive. It comes folded flat in its own pretty mailing envelope and can be set up in a matter of minutes to decorate a dresser or nightstand. You'll find the Hallmark Cradle Card looks like a quaint old-fashioned cradle with stand-up rockers and a scalloped hood bedecked with a pink ribbon bow. It's a wonderfully thoughtful gift and card combined, and it costs just one dollar. Yes, and the Hallmark Cradle Card makes a charming centerpiece for baby showers, too. So why not get yours soon? You'll know it by the Hallmark and Crown on the package, the symbol that always brings an extra measure of joy, for it means you care enough to send the very best. And now here's Mr. Barrymore again. And I'll bet you have a quotation for us. Well, now, Frank, it, it just so happens that I do. It's from a fellow named Hare, and it goes like this. Could we understand half what mothers say and do to us when infants, we should be filled with such conceit of our own importance as would make us insupportable through life. Happy the child whose mother is tired of talking nonsense to him before he's old enough to know the sense of it. <laughs> but in any case, I know that all new mothers and fathers will appreciate your sending him a Hallmark cradle card. I've seen them and they're delightful. Make a fine display for all other cards the new parents receive. Now, I'd like to tell you about our new arrival to the Hallmark Hall of Fame next week. She is Sacagawea, a young Indian girl who guided a famous expedition through a hostile wilderness opening the great northwest of a growing America. I will hope you'll all be listening to this stirring, true story of courage and adventure. Our Hallmark Hall of Fame is every Sunday. Our producer director is William Gay. Our music was composed and conducted by David Rose. And our script tonight was written by Milton Geiger. Until next Sunday, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. <laughs> Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. A part of Captain Jack Jewett was played by John Stevenson with Barbara Eiler as Sally. Others in our cast included Whitfield Connor, Frank Martin, Ben Wright, Ted DeCorsia, and Peter Leeds. Every Sunday, Hallmark Cards presents two great programs for the whole family's enjoyment. The Hallmark Hall of Fame on radio with host Lionel Barrymore and on television with Miss Sarah Churchill. Consult your paper for time and station. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when we present another true-to-life story of actual persons who in their own way have contributed to a better world for all of us to live in. Next Sunday, we honor Sacagawea on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.